Okay, so uh, uh, today I'm going to use the, the this uh, uh, the project the slides a bit. Uh, so the, and uh, also then there are some pictures I wanted to show. Uh, these are probably not as uh, pretty as uh, Deepak's uh, pre uh, pictures, but anyway, it's uh, some uh, slides that I have. Uh, okay, so uh, before, uh, so today we are supposed to uh, discuss about, uh, so let me just out, uh, say about all I have been doing. So we have been uh, like uh, basically exploring the question of whether in one dimensional systems we can uh, find some system which uh, shows Fourier's law. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Okay, and we, uh, we looked at uh, the, uh, uh, harmonic chains. Uh, both ordered and uh, disordered. And I uh, discussed, uh, like I basically discussed this formalism where you can uh, model the baths as, uh, in some way and then uh, compute exact expressions for current and so on. And then we saw that in the ordered case, uh, the current doesn't decay at all uh, with system size. Disordered case, it, uh, there is some funny dependence on uh, boundary conditions and uh, no Fourier's law. And then uh, we looked at harmonic chains with uh, noisy dynamics. with And uh, so here the idea was to, uh, so finally we want to study anharmonic chains, but those are very complicated and uh, the idea was here to uh, do some stochastic dynamics which preserves the, uh, which has the same conservation laws, but allows us to uh, get analytic results. And in particular in this case we saw that the two point correlations form a close set of equations. Uh, uh, but still uh, uh, give a lot of non-linear, uh, non-trivial features. Uh, and from this, uh, what I said was that you can actually, uh, like, uh, for systems in equilibrium, uh, you can uh, describe how uh, heat pulse uh, would spread. Okay. So basically, uh, what I said is that it uh, satisfies some kind of fractional fractional diffusion equation. And then we interpreted this equation like, uh, so we said that this equation has to be interpreted as in Fourier space. Uh, and in real space, it looks like an integral uh, equation with, so the, there's some sort of uh, non-local non response. Right, okay, so one question um, that Deepak asked was like, uh, how, how do you get non-local response? I mean, like you can't have instantaneous propagation, right? So how do you get that? Uh, so, uh, so I just want to uh, discuss another model uh, b before I go to the next uh, step, which is uh, looking at real anharmonic chains and understanding what happens there. Uh, in this context, I just wanted to discuss one more uh, sort of uh, phenomenological model, uh, which uh, uh, which maybe answers uh, Deepak's question and is, uh, is also relevant for the uh, real uh, transport problem. Okay. Okay, so this is like uh, for diffusion, of course, uh, so this is a fractional diffusion equation. And the usual diffusion equation is uh, the, so there's some constant here. Uh, Okay, so this is the usual uh, uh, diffusion equation. And this we know we can think of like uh, maybe the heat, uh, whatever is carrying heat is doing a random walk, right, or just a diffusion. And that would give rise to this uh, sort of a macroscopic law. 
So here we can ask, is there a microscopic, uh, simple microscopic description which will give a similar kind of equation, okay. And the model that uh, has been discussed is uh, something called a Levy walk. <coughs> so this Levy walk model is actually some model which uh, explains a lot of uh, the stuff that people have seen uh, in heat transport. So I'll just describe this model. So, uh, so usual random walk is like you, uh, you have a, uh, so let's, let's on the, on the uh, infinite line. You start from the origin and you uh, go left and right with equal probability, right? And you can choose your distance from some distribution which has a finite uh, variance. Okay, so, uh, I mean, each step can be different, but uh, it should be chosen from a distribution with a finite variance. Uh, so if you keep doing that, then we know that after some time the distribution uh, P of xt. Uh, so if you start from the origin, this eventually becomes a Gaussian. Okay, so now the Levy work is something which uh, what you do is uh, you start from the origin and you choose a direction randomly with equal probability uh, and then you choose a time from a uh, uh, from a distribution phi of t, which has uh, power law tails, okay. So at large time, this should, uh, you, this has a tail which is, let's say, t to or beta plus one, where beta is uh, greater than one is less than two. Okay, so uh, this means that uh, the first moment of, uh, is finite, but the second moment diverges of the time, okay. Uh, okay, so you choose the ra direction randomly and you choose a time from this distribution and then you travel with constant speed for that period of time, okay. So basically uh, you might, uh, you, you might go for some time like, uh, like that and then uh, you choose a smaller time and go to the left maybe and then uh, some other time and so on, okay. So this is how the walk proceeds. Okay. So I should say there's something called Levy flight, which is comp uh, very, which a bit, bit different and uh, there's an important difference. So there's Levy flight, where, uh, where it looks uh, similar, but there you choose the steps, uh, sizes, uh, the, each step is, uh, uh, the step length is chosen from such a distribution, okay. But it, uh, like you take the same time, okay. So, which means that you're, uh, you might have a different velocity at uh, each step. Okay, so for Levy flight, uh, what's not good is that if you calculate the uh, second moment, it diverges. But in this uh, uh, model, if you calculate second moment, uh, we know that at uh, in a given time, you can't go uh, more than uh, velocity into time, right? That's the maximum you can travel. So the second moment is going to be finite. Okay, so this is uh, some slight difference between the two models. Uh, but here what's relevant is the Levy walk model, okay. So for the Levy walk model, what uh, you can <coughs> easily, uh, so just for random walk, we write a Fokker Planck equation. So here if you write, uh, what's the, if you ask what is the equation P of xt, uh, so this is given by half. And then uh, plus okay. I'll just explain uh, these terms where it, okay. So this is more or less like the random work, except here. Uh, so probability you can are at x at time t is that you should have started from some place uh, time like uh, t prime before, but then you would have been somewhere here and this is the probability of that uh, step, right? So this is uh, uh, from minus vt and this is from plus vt. And the other thing that you can hap happen is that you take a step which is uh, bigger than time t, okay? So this is the probability that you take, choose a, st a step length which is uh, larger than uh, uh, larger than t, and so uh, this uh, then you will definitely at time t you will be exactly at uh, uh, vt, right? So these are the uh, this is the equation. Uh, uh, you have to think a bit maybe if it's not clear, but uh, 
No, this is just like what is the probability that uh, so I'll be exactly at the uh, uh, no after uh, so if I if, if I at time t if I ask what is the probability that I'm at the edge so the, at the edge there's a so there's some with some probability I choose a time which is bigger than this right so then I, I'll always be at the edge at that time so that will give me some delta functions at the peak. Okay, so now this equation is, you can, it's easy to solve by Fourier Laplace transform and you'll get some P tilde K, uh, uh, P tilde Ks. Okay, so I won't write the form, maybe I'll show it uh, somewhere. Uh, okay. <coughs> okay, so 1 minus, uh, where, here? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, one way you can check uh, that probably it's correct is if you integrate over all x, uh, this is 1. Uh, this gives, uh, this plus this will give i t 0 to t, and then this is uh, psi t, right? And this plus this is uh, 1. So uh, it's, it, it should be okay. I mean, okay, that least it's, sorry? Oh, it's dt prime. Okay, so uh, so I won't uh, solve, but basically it's easy to find the Fourier Laplace uh, of this. So for uh, and if you do this, uh, then uh, you uh, then you can't invert it. It's 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 not uh, possible to invert it exactly. But uh, what you see is that uh, okay. So I mean, if you just simulate it, what does it look like? Okay, so uh, if you simulate this process, then basically it looks like. Uh, So you start from a delta function, and then what you find is that uh, at some time it uh, okay. So there are this uh, delta function peaks which have exactly this uh, high uh, strength, and then the distribution out here uh, in the uh, in the bulk of the distribution it basically looks like a Fourier transform of e to the power minus. Uh, k to the power beta t. Okay, so this is the Levy distribution, but so this is true only in the bulk. Okay, but then uh, uh, it's uh, it's the it's uh, it has a finite support up to uh, v t. So this is x, and I'm plotting p of x t. So the distribution doesn't extend beyond uh, this uh, the maximum uh, uh, distance v t, uh, where it has this delta function. In the bulk, it has this property. Okay. So, uh, so when I derived the, this uh, equation, uh, this is actually valid in some scaling limit where you are, in some sense, you are looking at uh, kind of the bulk of the distribution. Okay. So this is similar to even for random walk. Uh, like if you do random walk, of course, we get some binomial distribution, and uh, that is valid. Uh, so that, that for that distribution, we know that the probability that the walker is beyond n is exactly zero, right? But for the Gaussian, there's still some weight at the ends. But the Gaussian is valid in some scaling limit. Uh, and similarly here, I mean, uh, in the bulk, it's uh, this result, uh, it's a strictly a Levy distribution. But then you have to put a cutoff and so on, OK? So uh, yeah, so if you look at this uh, uh, Fourier Laplace uh, uh, carefully, you'll find that uh, in appropriate limits, it has this form. And uh, then you, you can examine it at various places, OK? So there are various things known. I'll give some references, maybe. OK, so, uh, so actually, I, uh, uh, I put up some notes in the, in the website today, uh, which, has, uh, uh, which, has, uh, which has a section on Levy Vox and uh, describes all this in detail. So you can also study Levy Vox with open boundaries and see what happens. And you recover many of the features that, uh, uh, that I discussed. Okay. Uh, okay, so that was one thing. And then there was one question about, uh, like, uh, uh, so I wrote some, uh, 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 while deriving this, I wrote some equation like, uh, Okay, maybe I'll just show the, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, some equation I wrote. Uh, and I said that uh, if you, uh, so this, there are this, uh, okay, what is this? 
Uh, yeah, so this is a U and V. I mean, yesterday I had called it Y. So these are the scaling variables. And then in, uh, uh, so this is, again, you have to remember that these equations are valid in some uh, inappropriate scaling limits, okay. And then what I said is that if you do some Fourier transforms on the infinite line, you'll basically get the, uh, uh, the, get the, get the uh, fractional equation to, so the way to do that is, okay, so there are these two variables, u and v. So first, uh, supposing you take a Fourier transform in, uh, in the variable v, okay. So then, uh, uh, then what you get is uh, this thing that you have out here. Um, okay, so if you just take a Fourier transform in v, uh, then you get this equation for, uh, for u. And now when you solve this equation, uh, so basically if you, uh, so I just want to say how do you get a k to the power 3 by 2, okay. So the basic idea is uh, you have del 4 of C uh, U uh, T equals to k square C U tau T, right, okay, with some constants and all. Uh, now you want to solve this equation and again you'll take, uh, so in this, at this stage what you have to do is try a solution of the form, you want to satisfy some boundary conditions are there, okay. So you want to uh, try a solution of the form, uh, maybe uh, e to the power alpha u, okay. And then if you put this, of course you see that you get alpha 4 is equal to k square, okay. So that gives you uh, alpha is goes as k to the power half and that's how uh, the k to the power half comes. So it's a bit, little bit more algebra. You have to put the correct boundary conditions and so on. And uh, eventually, uh, at the end of the day, you just uh, get this uh, this uh, final result that in Fourier space T satisfies a uh, fractional equation. Okay. So that's uh, so this you can find in the notes that I uploaded uh, today. Uh, so this is some review article that we are writing. Uh, I'm not sure we are allowed to do this, but um, anyway, uh, doing this, okay. Uh, okay, so any questions on the part that I talked about yesterday? Okay, if there are no questions, I'll uh, move now to the uh, next part. Okay, so the, I mean, so this is a simulation of this uh, alternate particle, uh, hard particle gas, uh, and where you start the system in equilibrium, and then you put some energy at some point and see how it spreads, okay. So here you can see that, uh, uh, so basically what you see in the uh, simulation would be, uh, so you put in some energy and then after some time you see that uh, you get something like that, okay. And then at a later time you see uh, it spreads uh, like that and so on. And then you have to do some scaling. So this is uh, X and uh, this is uh, early time, later time, later time. So if you now scale by T to the power gamma and multiply this by T to the power gamma, then you find everything collapses. And this gamma is uh, like some uh, power five third in this particular model. And, uh, and in the inset, what you see is uh, you can actually fit this exactly to the Levy distribution, okay. So this was, at that time, uh, one didn't know any microscopic derivation, but it was just an observation that you can connect like uh, this uh, spreading of heat pulses exactly to uh, whatever you get from uh, this uh, levy walk model that I showed. Uh, okay, so you don't get the delta functions because uh, they also, uh, so to fit the, uh, so at the end you, in the, in the real system, uh, at the, so, so you get something at this, you get these peaks, but these are not strict delta functions, okay. And uh, what, uh, so you can change the Levy walk a bit. You can say that uh, you choose the velocity from some Gaussian distribution, okay. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you get, uh, you can even fit these uh, edges. Still, still with the time linearly. The width scales linearly with time. Right, yeah. And the width also scales linearly. Uh, so in the uh, in the Levy walk, of course, they are strictly yeah, uh, like delta functions, and their height goes down as some power one by t to the power some I think beta. Uh, and uh, but in this case, I think uh, the width, if if you put the a, yeah, I think it's probably uh, goes down linearly. Yeah, of course, linearly. Uh, so the upper picture is a collapse. Right. Yeah. So it's changing the same way. Yeah, right, yeah, as the, no, so it's, because it's scaled as T2 or gamma, 
So probably it's the same scaling, right? Uh, but there, okay, they, they, so there I think they're fitting to just to one time. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. So the middle peak fits KHST to the first gamma, outer one KHST. Gamma is less than one. Uh, gamma is less than one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, three phase step two. Okay, so uh, okay, so this was the uh, yes, I mean uh, picture. Okay, so now I'll come to the third part, which is uh, basically. Okay, so now we are thinking, let's say, for a system like uh, basically uh, FPU, which is uh, Okay, and for, so for this system, uh, this is expected to be a non I mean, it's uh, known to be a non-integrable system, and uh, the conserved quantities are energy uh, and uh, momentum. And like I said, uh, it's good to think of another conserved quantity, which is like the volume. And you introduce this quantity Rx equals to Qx plus 1 minus Qx. Okay, and uh, so... Uh, so this is conserved, Px is conserved, and uh, energy is conserved. So this, uh, this is what I called epsilon of x. Okay, so uh, now what the, uh, the idea of this theory is basically to make predictions for equilibrium correlation functions, okay. So I mean, uh, so what is the relation between uh, transport and equilibrium correlation functions? So basically, like when we put a heat pulse, uh, it spreads. Uh, this is, of course, a completely non-equilibrium uh, uh, phenomena. Uh, but uh, if you ask in equilibrium, uh, if you take a system in equilibrium, there are spontaneous fluctuations. And this decay, you expect that they should decay in the same way as uh, this heat pulse if it's a small pulse, right? So what you expect is that uh, if you somehow if you can compute these objects, like uh, in equilibrium, uh, then they, this should uh, have the same information. Okay. So if it's a diffusive system, this object would just uh, behave like a Gaussian. And uh, now for anomalous system, can we? Compute, uh, so we want to compute it using this fluctuating hydrodynamics and see uh, how it uh, behaves. Okay, and the other thing, of course, we also can compute using this uh, theory is uh, things like current-current uh, correlation. Uh, which again uh, is uh, in, uh, which is again uh, sort of relevant because uh, there's this thing called linear response theory, uh, and uh, there's a formula called Green Kubo formula which tells you how to compute conductivity uh, from such uh, calculations. Okay. So these are uh, time-dependent correlations in equilibrium. Okay, 
So now, uh, so the basically the, uh, so I should just uh, maybe state this result, uh, green Kubo formula. Uh, it basically says that uh, the thermal conductivity should be uh, 1 by uh, I guess this gets covered in. Uh, this gets covered, is it? Or it's okay. Okay, so I had defined the local current operator on each bond, and then you can define a total current, which is a sum over all the currents, and then uh, you can compute this object uh, J0, JT for a system of size N. Uh, then you have to take this limit that you have to divide by uh, N, take the limit N going to infinity, and then take this time tau. Okay, so you have to do this limit in a particular way to get a, a sensible answer. Uh, but and then if it's a system with diffusive transport, this should give you the thermal conductivity. Okay. So now what happens in this anomalous transport, which was first seen in uh, simulations, is that of course if you want to get a finite answer, this should decay sufficiently fast. Uh, what you find in these systems is that this de decays uh, as a power law, uh, like uh, some power, let's say. Uh, uh, the last one. Okay, and let's just put some alpha to the power nu, where nu is uh, less than one. Okay, so if uh, nu is less than one, then of course you this become this blows up. So you get in, so that's why you get all these diverging conductivities and all. Okay, so uh, for systems for with uh, this all these one D systems with anomalous transport, this is what you find. Okay, so uh, now there's some way like, uh, so then of course here it's not clear how do you d determine the system size dependence of current using this approach. Uh, so there's some heuristic uh, idea that if you replace this upper cutoff by the system size, then, uh, then you can get uh, the correct uh, uh, dependence, okay. And uh, this works for um, um, almost all cases, okay. So uh, that, that's something you can do. And so you can, uh, from here, from this kind of equilibrium study, you can actually say something about the non-equilibrium problem, okay, and you can compute exponents and so on. So that's the basic idea. So there are two kinds of things you can do. One is like look at this uh, current-current correlation and use this green Kubo formula to estimate uh, exponents and so on uh, for the non-equilibrium problem. And, the, and then you can look at uh, like uh, this sort of correlation functions which tell you how uh, heat pulses would spread in the non-equilibrium case. Uh, but uh, basically we want to look at the scaling form of such correlation functions, okay. So if it's a diffusive system, uh, this should have the scaling form uh, 1 over t to the power half, some function of x by t half. And uh, we want to see if this is true for this anomalous systems, right? So that's the main idea.
Okay, so uh, in hydrodynamics, uh, what one does is basically try to write, uh, you forget all, you want to forget all this uh, microscopic degrees of freedom, but just look at the uh, conserved quantities. Okay, so there are three conserved quantities and we want to write some coarse grained equations for these uh, conserved quantities. Yeah. Uh, here. No, so that's what, so this is a completely equilibrium, there's no heat baths. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, so what you, uh, I mean, if, if you did a simulation, what you should do, if, what it really means is that you prepare the system in equilibrium, like you choose the initial condition from a equilibrium distribution and then do the, like the uh, deterministic dynamics and then just evaluate this by averaging over the initial conditions. So that's what it means. So that's the initial condition is chosen from equilibrium distribution, but then it's uh, deterministic dynamics and there's no stochastic dynamics at all. Okay, so uh, so how do we write the hydrodynamic equations? So the basic idea is that you, you uh, like we, first we just write microscopic continuity equations. Okay, so I mean there are these three variables R x, uh, P x, and E x, and we just want to write what are the microscopic continuity equations. So it's clear that if I write del R x by del T, uh, that is basically uh, given by P of x plus one minus P of x. Right, that's clear, right? Because Rx is Qx plus one minus Qx. If I take a derivative, it's just Px plus one. So this is like, uh, if you just think in a coarse trained sense, this is like minus uh, del del x or plus, plus. Or, okay, minus del del x of, uh, I'll call this the uh, current corresponding to volume, uh, where Jp is, uh, is equal to uh, minus px. Okay, so this is, uh, you can think of like, this is the current corresponding to uh, stretch, this variable, okay. So then I can write what is del px by del t. And uh, this of course, just from the equations of motion, we know that this is given by uh, u prime of, uh, so this is del h by del ux, so this is u prime of uh, Rx minus u prime of Rx minus one. Okay, now uh, this is uh, u prime Rx is just the force between particles, which is like the pressure, right? So this is just uh, equals to uh, minus del del. So this is again in gradient form, right? Between two sides. So this is again gradient form already. So I can write it uh, of, uh, so this should be R. This is the current corresponding to volume. And then this is the current corresponding to uh, momentum uh, and uh, this small p. And this current is uh, basically the uh, pressure. Okay, so pressure is just the force between particles. Okay, so I'll, uh, this is the pressure of the, in the system. And then finally energy, uh, this we already worked out uh, before. And this uh, is basically given by uh, if you look back at uh, what we had, uh, this you can write as del del x of P into P, okay? So capital P is pressure. Uh, okay, so this is uh, what, I, I'm not sure of the sign, maybe plus, okay. Uh, Okay, so these are the three, uh, okay, maybe this I'll call J, E. Okay, so uh, momentum times C, A, okay. Uh, okay, so now this probably, uh, I mean, you should uh, compare with, uh, maybe uh, it's good to idea, like uh, one place where you have already used hydrodynamics is like in fluids. 
Uh, and there, if you just rem remember what the, the kind of equations you write, I mean, you have like, uh, again, uh, conservation of uh, particles and then momentum and energy. So the first equation would look uh, something like uh, maybe Uh, and then you uh, write something like uh, and then there's some in, uh, expression for energy. Okay, so this I'm just writing Navier-Stokes. Uh, but, okay, so in Navier Stokes, when you write, there's something called a Euler equation where you don't put the viscosity and the heat conduction uh, terms. So that's called the Euler equations. And then if you include uh, those, then you get something like eta, uh, maybe here, uh, uh, del square of uh, u and so on, right? So these are the, uh, so these are things which involve transport coefficients, eta, and then this one has a thermal conductivity. Okay, so the part which doesn't involve uh, like all these uh, uh, dissipative terms, that's called the Euler equation, okay. So, uh, so here what we'll do is first we'll write the Euler equations and then we'll just uh, add uh, the dissipation and then we'll also add noise, okay. So finally what we want to describe is uh, what we want to do with the hydrodynamics is to describe uh, uh, fluctuations in equilibrium, okay. So we want to write uh, equations to describe uh, small fluctuations around equilibrium. Okay, so these are the equations, uh, and uh, maybe it's better if I use the slides now. Uh, okay, let me just write one more. Okay, so there are these three conservation laws, and uh, then what I want to do is I want to look at sm uh, small fluctuations uh, around the equilibrium values, okay. So, uh, so let's say the stretch, I mean, given this anharmonic chain uh, in equilibrium, okay, so the equilibrium is basically, uh, so what is the equilibrium state I want to consider? Because I have all these conservation laws, I mean, momentum is kind of, I can go to a frame where uh, momentum is zero, but uh, corresponding to stretch, uh, I have a conjugate variable, which is the pressure in the system, and then, tem uh, of course, the temperature is there, okay. So the equilibrium state is basically given by uh, this distribution, e to the power minus uh, beta, uh, and then h. Uh, this is the usual thing, but I also need to put a pressure term, uh, uh, which is conjugate to the volume. Right. So this is the uh, this is my uh, equilibrium uh, state. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is P of, uh, okay, so the, and uh, given this state, I can uh, compute, of course, what is the expectation of energy. So, of course, in this case, uh, average energy on each point will be equal and so on. So, I can compute what is average uh, this and what is average uh, stretch. Right. These are things which I can easily compute. And this should exp depend on, of course, uh, uh, on the pressure and temperature. Right. I mean, this will also depend on uh, pressure and temperature. Okay. And this is some computation. I can just uh, using this, uh, uh, I can go do it trivially. Okay. So one uh, simple thing about this model, uh, which uh, simplifies calculation, is that if you look at this uh, Hamiltonian, it has, it's just a product measure. Okay, so in this uh, new variables, uh, because uh, now this Hamiltonian is just pk square by 2m plus v of r, uh, u of rk, uh, and then I have this part, okay, so this is some work k. So it's like uh, each uh, k is like, a, uh, it's a disconnected guys, and so finding equilibrium properties is uh, trivial, okay, like you still need, because it involves cubic and quartic potentials, you still need to do some uh, in integrals and so on to find the equation of state, but it's something you can do easily in Mathematica or something. Uh, of course, Mathematica, you have to be careful, right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's, uh, <laughs> huh? Sometimes, I mean, but it's good to always uh, double check in various ways, I think, because this is not the first time I, I mean, uh, I found like it's, uh, I mean, it can go wrong. 
Uh, okay, so uh, so we know the equation of state, and from that we can calculate various things. And uh, now what we want to do is look at small fluctuations of the fields around these equilibrium values. Okay, so these are the equilibrium values. Uh, momentum is let's say there's no flow, so it's zero. And uh, uh, this is some average energy is there, and then we're looking at the fluctuations. So these three fields, uh, fluctuating fields, I call them U1, U2, U3. Okay. And now what we'll do is, uh, so we want to write equations for these three fields. So del T of uh, U1, U2, U3. And so what we do is we had um, uh, like uh, this currents here, uh, J, uh, J1, J2, J3, we had these three currents. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll also write these currents in terms of, the, uh, of these fields, okay. So in equilibrium, of course, we know exactly what these are. Uh, and yeah, system is okay. System is gone. Uh, system is just the anharmonic chain, which is okay. Maybe I'll write it there. I should have the system. <coughs> Okay, so this is an anharmonic chain where uh, I call this separation between particles as RKs, that's the stretch variable, okay. And uh, then, uh, so here you don't have, like boundaries are not important, I mean you can put any boundary conditions. You can even put them on a ring of some size, okay, so maybe that's easier periodic ring. And then the potential uh, between, like interaction potential just depends on uh, quadric and this cubic and quartic term. Okay, and uh, so this is the basically the F uh, Fermi pasta Ulam uh, chain. Okay, so that's the system. That's clear, right? Which second term? Oh, the, the, see this. Uh, so given a system, uh, I, I have to describe what the ensemble is. Right now, uh, this uh, this chain, I, I can control. Uh, what are the things I can control? I can control the total energy or the temperature and I can control the total volume or pressure, right? These are the things, I, even if you have a gas, right? I mean, uh, to describe the system, you need uh, pressure, temperature, right? So that's why I'm putting this uh, extra term, because that's also something uh, which controls my equilibrium, right? Both pressure and temperature. And uh, given that, I can compute uh, what are the average quantity, like what is the average energy, what is the average uh, extension in equilibrium, given that distribution. Okay, so uh, so now what we do is uh, uh, okay. So let's say, supposing uh, this is the uh, this current was pressure, and uh, pressure is of course a function of uh, I mean you can invert it and then pressure becomes a function of energy. And uh, so if you invert this, basically pressure is a function of energy and R. And similarly, uh, uh, the temperature is a function of Average energy and R, okay. And uh, given this, I can now expand these functions uh, to get, uh, so the current dependent on pressure, let's say this current uh, depends on pressure, and I can expand the pressure around the equilibrium state. Okay, so uh, so basically what uh, now we want to do is we can, we, we have these currents, and we want to write them uh, in equilibrium, of course, is zero, but then uh, if for some small fluctuations, uh, this will involve like uh, uh, each of the currents. So there are three currents, J, I, and uh, I can expand them at, uh, for uh, 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 in terms of the fluctuating field. Okay, so uh, the first order expansion would just give me something like this. And then if I go expand uh, further, if I keep uh, nonlinear terms, I get something like uh, I, J, K, Okay, so this is what I'll do. 
Okay, so and how do I find this uh, coefficients a? So just like I said, if I look at the second current, which is pressure, uh, I, I write the pressure in terms of energy and uh, uh, extension. And when I expand, I just say that this is equal to uh, P equilibrium uh, plus del P by del E. Uh, uh, and then del E is basically uh, U3 plus del P by uh, del R. Uh, and uh, then that's uh, del R is uh, U1, right? So this gives me the first order, uh, this matrix A. And then if I expand to second order, I uh, get this matrix uh, G, right? So that's how I'll uh, find these coefficients A and uh, G. <coughs> okay, I hope this, this is the sort of important step, okay? So basically the point is that this currents, I'll expand, do this expansion, and all this A and G can be determined once I need, know the equation of state of the system, okay, which in this case I can find uh, at least uh, numerically, uh, doing some simple integrals. Okay, uh, any questions? No. Okay, so if I do this, then, uh, then I basically, uh, so this is what I get uh, for the three fields. Uh, this is uh, what I wrote here. And so this blue part is what I would call the Euler equations, okay? And then uh, I add these parts. Uh, right now you can just think of it that I'm adding them phenomenologically, okay? So there's this dissipation term, uh, which is like what I wrote uh, for Navier-Stokes, this uh, viscosity term and so on. This is dissipation and then noise. And uh, what I'll, uh, and this noise and dissipation will satisfy some fluctuation dissipation kind of relation which ensures that uh, the system will uh, will uh, always be in equilibrium. Okay. Okay. So uh, so this is my coarse grain description of the microscopic model, and uh, what's important is that this A and H are known completely in terms of the original microscopic model, which is the Fermi pasta Ulam chain. So given whatever alpha beta parameters, I uh, I know this A and H completely explicitly. Okay, while these things I don't know too much uh, about uh, in terms of the microscopic model, uh, but the uh, only thing I know is that they satisfy fluctuation dissipation. Okay, so now uh, the uh, the usual, uh, yeah. Uh, how do we know it's fluctuation? No, if you solve it, we'll find, I mean, so now we'll try to analyze this equation and see what happens. I mean, we expect in a diffusive system fluctuations should uh, like follow diffusion, right? Here we'll have to analyze these equations and see what happens. Yeah. D u by del x whole square. No, so it has to be in the conservative form. Like you, you are, so it has to be in like uh, whatever I write on the right has to be like okay. So yeah, so this is important. Uh, Okay, so basic structure is I wrote uh, del T of uh, ui, or let's see, alpha is equal to minus del x of, so then I had the first term was what I call the Euler term, which I know from microscopic dynamics, but then I add other parts, but everything has to be within the derivative. Okay, and then I just add, uh, I mean, it's just uh, diffusion and A. So I add uh, maybe a, a D into uh, del X U and then the noise. But uh, everything has to be within the... Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, but you, I mean, you just add the simplest thing which works. And no, but for example, in Navier-Stokes also you get the linear, right? Both the heat conduction term and the, the viscosity term, both of them come in exactly this form, right? So this is what one would expect. Okay, so uh, okay, so I should say that, uh, I mean, uh, if you quickly want to learn, learn about uh, fluctuating hydrodynamics, I think uh, Tom's book is great. I mean, uh, that's the fastest way to read about 
uh, fluctuating hydro hydrodynamics in a variety of models. Okay, so that's a, a good uh, a, uh, introduction. Uh, okay, so uh, right, yeah. So now the way to proceed. Uh, now, finally, we want to compute these correlation, various correlations of these fluctuating fields, and the standard way to proceed is to first look at. Uh, so this is a now a nonlinear equation because there's u square here. Uh, so if we drop this term, then it's uh, very simple. It's uh, just linear equations, okay? And we know how to solve linear equations. So the idea is uh, first solve the uh, linearized dynamics, and uh, okay. So if you look at the linear equations, it uh, has this form plus. Okay, so I drop the GU square term, and this what uh, the uh, the way one should look solve it is uh, try to diagonalize this matrix, and so you we define new uh, coordinates uh, phi. So we if I just uh, take some linear combination of these basic fields and uh, form these fields phi. So this has three components. Uh, I'll just call them phi plus, phi zero, and phi minus. Uh, so this is. Uh, some matrix into u1, u2, u3. Okay, so I just uh, define new fields which are linear combinations of the old fields. Uh, and this matrix is uh, something which diagonalizes this matrix A, okay. So R A, R inverse is uh, diagonal. And what you find is that when you diagonalize this matrix A, uh, basically you find that it has the structure uh, C, 0, minus C, uh, 0. Okay, so these are the, so there's a 0 eigenvalue. And then there are two eigenvalues, c and plus minus c, okay. Now, if you analyze these equations uh, and look at what are the, uh, like what are the correlations of these fields, uh, if at this linear level of linearized hydrodynamics, what you find is that uh, phi plus, so you can now compute these objects, plus minus, and let's say this, Okay, so uh, these things now you can uh, compute uh, from the linearized theory. And what you find is that uh, this, uh, so if you plot them, uh, you find that uh, this basically gives you some uh, sort of uh, what are known as sound modes. So you get two peaks like this. So I'll call this C plus plus XT, and I'll call this C zero zero XT. Okay, so this I'm plotting C uh, either, uh, so plus plus xt is that, and minus minus is uh, that, and uh, so this is uh, a space, and uh, this distance is basically C times t, okay. So this is basically the speed of sound in this system, and uh, you find that you get these two modes, and uh, in the linearized theory, of course, you'll get diffusive modes, okay? So these modes will spread uh, in a diffusive way, and they're tra uh, traveling uh, ballistically, okay? So these are uh, C++, and C00 corresponds to the zero eigenvalue here, and uh, what you get is uh, uh, like the heat mode, uh, which uh, again uh, is uh, just diffusing, and uh, it stays here, okay? Okay, and uh, so these are, the, uh, these are called the sound modes. And this is the heat mode. Okay, so now what we want to do is, of course, you don't see any anomalous uh, behavior. And uh, now what we want to do is bring in the anharmonicity and see what happens. Okay, so this I, uh, okay, so now let me go to the slides back. Uh, uh, okay, so it's not there, so. Uh, okay, so once you, uh, how to find? Uh, we don't know. I mean, uh, but we, uh, what is uh, uh, nice is that at the end we don't need them. Okay, <laughs> so you have to put the right now. We have to put them. No, where? 
See, out here right now, I didn't need, uh, okay, so of course at this uh, level, this, uh, I mean, the, the diffusion constant basically determines how this uh, widths and all. But uh, once you put the nonlinearity, what we'll find is that all this, uh, this part becomes kind of irrelevant. Okay, so that's what we'll see. Okay, so uh, we have this, linear, so if you write uh, equations for, uh, let's say, phi plus, uh, it basically looks like minus del x of c phi plus uh, So instead of writing the equations for u, I'm now writing the uh, linearized equations for phi plus and then there was a diffusion term and then there's noise. Okay, so I'm just writing schematically, but roughly it looks like this. Now, if you include the nonlinearity, uh, then uh, uh, then what you find, uh, so I, I'll just state without proof. I mean, so you have to basically, it depends on this, uh, uh, the form of this uh, matrix I had here. Okay, so you have to write this now in normal mode uh, variables, in uh, phi plus phi, phi minus in terms of that. And this is, uh, uh, and then you, you can, uh, from the microscopic, you, you can compute this matrix and just look at it, right? Yeah. So what you find is that the leading nonlinear term that you get here uh, looks like del x, okay, so this I'll call some coupling constant g, and then uh, phi plus square. Okay, so now this is some equation that we recognize at once. It's uh, some equation called the Burgers equation, okay, with noise, of course. And uh, then if you define, uh, uh, if you define, uh, I think, is it the other way around? I mean, maybe other way. Other way, you know, this is right, okay. So if you define uh, another field, del x phi is h, then uh, you can show that this is exactly the KPZ equation. Okay, so if I just take uh, del x uh, maybe here, uh, then uh, basically you'll get the, no, or what is the correct thing, del x? Uh, uh, is this is the correct transformation, right? From Burgess, right, okay. So if you uh, use this and uh, write an equation for h, you'll get what is known as the KPZ equation, which is, uh, Okay, so here it's not conservative noise uh, because I've taken out the del x. Okay, and uh, so this equation is uh, has been studied widely for uh, like it's a model for growth of surfaces and a lot of things are known. Okay, so therefore using these results we can kind of predict what uh, what this uh, correlations for phi plus is going to be. And okay, so this is the, as far as the, uh, is the uh, sound modes are concerned. Okay, yeah. No, 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 noise term doesn't do anything. I mean, okay, so let me just do it. I mean, if so. Huh? No, 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 no. Uh, what was it? Del T. Uh, what is it? Del. What am I missing? Uh, Okay, sorry. I think uh, this is uh, del x phi is phi phi is okay. So let me just try. Okay. So something I just replace uh, phi t is equal to del x h. I think that's the correct one, right? So it's okay. So now if you just put it here, you get del t del x uh, h equals to minus c. So everywhere you will get an extra del x. Right, so del x goes out, you can forget del x and you basically give this. So it's the same noise. Okay, so this is the correct transformation, uh, phi t equals to del x h. Uh, okay, so therefore from here, uh, we can, uh, using KPZ results, we can say what the sound modes are going to be. Okay, uh, and I'll write down the prediction. 
And now let's look at the heat mode, uh, which was sitting here. And uh, so similarly, we have to write the equation uh, and see what is the uh, what is the leading nonlinear correction to the e equation. Okay. So for the heat mode, what we find is uh, that uh, at the non uh, at the linear level, it looked like so the speed of sound was zero, so we don't get this term. And then we have some del x square uh, phi zero plus uh, b del x of eta zero. Okay, and then if you uh, put in the nonlinearity, what you find is that the nonlinearity has the form. Okay, so all this G, B, D are, can be different for the different modes. I'm just uh, writing schematically. Okay, so okay, it's G prime. Uh, but uh, for the heat mode, there's no self coupling term. Uh, it gets coupling from the sound modes. Okay, so here you basically find that it's phi plus square minus phi minus square. Okay, so it's basically, it's like, uh, I mean, there's this heat mode, and then there are the sound modes, and somehow they, uh, of course, uh, I mean, at the edges, they kind of overlap, okay? So it's, even though in the picture, I show them to be well separated, there's some overlap, and uh, these guys kind of change the form of this function, okay? And uh, now this equation, uh, of course, we already know something about phi plus phi minus, because that's given by solution of this equation. And this equation you can solve uh, using something called mode coupling theory to compute what the correlations for phi naught uh, should be. Okay. So, uh, so earlier we in the linearized theory these were diffusive, and now because of once you put in the nonlinearity, you find that they change. Uh, and uh, I'll just tell you what the theory predicts. <coughs> Okay, so this is what the prediction of the theory. Uh, for the sound modes, if you compute these correlation functions, they, are, uh, they have this scaling form. So it changes from the diffusive and you get this two-third exponent. And uh, this is some function which is uh, like it's a tabulated function. You can find uh, uh, like, uh, the, like precise form of the function in some uh, like, uh, or you can just compute it using some uh, formula. Uh, and uh, this just indicates that it's moving to the left or right. Uh, with some speed uh, c. Uh, and for the heat mode, uh, you find that it's actually given by the Levy distribution. Okay. Uh, and uh, also from the theory, you can see that there's actually a cutoff at some uh, distance beyond which you don't get any, uh, any propagation. Uh, so this is Levy work, but with that uh, caveat that uh, it has a finite uh, support. Okay, and uh, so what is interesting here is that, uh, I mean, there are all these scaling parameters, lambda s, lambda e, and then uh, speed of sound. And all these are uh, given explicitly from the theory, okay? And these don't involve, involve the diffusion constant and the B uh, constant, okay? So we don't, so finally in the asymptotic limit, we don't need those uh, stuff. Uh, everything is known from the microscopic model completely. Uh, and uh, so this is, uh, I mean, uh, so it's some very universal ex ex uh, uh, prediction. And uh, so the only thing is like, uh, there are, uh, like how do you, uh, I mean, is this the only uh, uh, behavior you can get? Okay, so it turns out that in some cases, the like depending on the choice of your uh, Hamiltonian and uh, parameters, like uh, what you can show is that uh, this term can vanish. Okay, so, the, uh, so this happens when the pressure is zero and the potential you are considering is an event potential. So there's no alpha r cube, it's just a beta r4, okay, in the FPU potential. So in this case, it vanishes, so the sound modes continue to be diffusive, but then they still affect the heat mode. Uh, this is still non-zero, and you get a different Levy exponent, okay. So there's a second universality class where uh, this is still diffusive and this is a uh, different Levy. Okay, so there are these two university classes uh, that have been uh, identified, and uh, okay, this time. So I'll just uh, show you some uh, like numerical verification of these results. Okay, so this is uh, so this is the FPU chain, and uh, this is uh, like uh, supposing you just compute these correlation functions. Uh, uh, so what you do is you start a system in equilibrium, uh, choose an initial condition from equilibrium, and then uh, compute this average and uh, compute this thermal average. And uh, what you'll find is, uh, uh, again, uh, it's like putting a heat pulse. You find that uh, initially all the energy is uh, at the origin, uh, and then it spreads. 
and uh, but the energy has like uh, some of the energy goes as sound and so you get this uh, two sound peaks and then at the center there is this uh, heat mode okay and then what we want to test is like we want to bring all so these are at different times increasing time so we want to bring them together and see if is the scaling prediction uh, so i'm supposed to think of this mode as a sound wave or a sound uh, it's a sound mode well, it's just sound. right yeah, it's a sound uh right yeah uh so okay so we uh, we just want to st ch see how this uh, so scaling works okay and uh, do we get the correct scaling functions and sorry sound weight but with anomalous spread right it's non diffusive uh, spreading of uh, sound uh right okay so okay so this is like uh, if you uh, scale all the data at different times and so on uh, this is the kind of collapse you get. So this uh, red one is at kind of early times, but after that you see that the collapse is uh, pretty good. And I have plotted the KPZ function also, which uh, looks good. Uh, and here, so this is for the heat mode, the sound modes, which were traveling. I just brought them all at the origin, and then I collapsed. Uh, okay, so here I should say that recently we have been looking at this in some other problems, in some spin chains and all. And sometimes, actually, it's hard to distinguish between uh, KPZ and uh, Gaussian distribution. Okay, so this is something again. I just should just warn people. Uh, so it's better to plot in maybe in different ways and make sure that it's uh, uh, it's actually uh, different. Okay, for the Levy distribution, it's uh, much more clean. Uh, at least in this uh, particular simulation, uh, you can uh, check various things like uh, the tails. You can see that they're really power laws and uh, completely non-Gaussian and uh, they fit with this uh, distribution extremely well okay so this theory really works uh, beautifully uh, for this particular this one uh, <laughs> is it significant i don't know okay so it's, i mean uh, it's because i mean uh, actually if you look at the if you look at the bare correlations like if you just look at delta e xt delta e 0 0 Right. So these are the bare correlations. So in that case, you would actually see something like, I mean, it would look really bad. Okay, so you'd see huge peaks. Okay, but now once you go to these normal modes, then uh, those uh, peaks become much, much, much smaller. But you can imagine because you're, it's some linearized thing, I mean, you still have some effect left, right? So, uh, yeah, so it can't be completely removed. But at least this transformation removes this uh, effect square significantly. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so the other thing is the, in this theory there's this speed of sound which uh, I mean you can again calculate from the microscopic model and it works uh, like it's very accurate. Uh, okay, so I just uh, showed an example. Uh, so I, I should say that if you do a simulation, so you'll find that it's not always easy to verify this because you have to go to very long times and uh, large system sizes. I'm showing you one of the best uh, like numerical uh, verification, but sometimes it's not so good, okay. Uh, okay, so there are various other systems where this theory has been uh, uh, used and it works really well. Okay, uh, what should what is okay? I have now 15 minutes. Uh, uh, any questions? Otherwise, I'll just yeah. Uh, can you use the microphone? So in the uh, equation for phi plus, uh, there is only del x phi plus square you have taken. Yeah. Uh, so, but the H matrix was not diagonal. H matrix, yeah, it involves, uh, it, uh, yeah, if you look at it, it will also have uh, other terms like phi plus, phi minus, and maybe phi minus square and so on, okay. But what you expect is that, uh, see, what you can see is that uh, even uh, at uh, the linearized level, they are already kind of separated. Okay, there's some small overlap. So the leading uh, effect will clearly be something like phi plus square, right? The other terms, so you are of course dropping them. Uh, so I mean, the, in the mode coupling calculation, I think you keep everything and then you can do this, but that of course involves some other approximations and so on. But uh, from the mode coupling calculation, uh, if you just uh, uh, like find the uh, scaling function and plot and compare with KPZ, it's like uh, it agrees extremely well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. That's a good question. I mean, uh, okay. It's kind of it regularizes thing. I mean, it helps in the calculation. Otherwise, it, at least the way, uh, for example, you do this mode coupling calculation. It, at, I mean, at the end, you take some limits and they just go away. But to do the calculation, you just need those because you have to write some Gaussian propagators and so on. Then do many integrals and so on. But uh, I mean, otherwise, it's uh, it's not. Uh, No, oh, sorry. Uh, see, uh, we, uh, so these lambdas are just scaling uh, parameters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, the, so those were uh, in the microscopic model I had, uh, I called them, I think, alpha r cubed by 3 plus beta r4 by 4. So the speed of sound, of course, depends on alpha, beta, and so on, right? Yeah. And uh, so, but this you have to compute using the uh, equation of state, basically. Uh, and similarly, lambda depends on all this alpha, beta, and so on. The, these lambdas, I mean, the scaling parameters. But uh, yeah, so those can be computed. Uh, yeah, but uh, so this term basically you need to kind of uh, regularize the calculation. But uh, finally, they just disappear. Uh, right? Yeah. And uh, like uh, one open question is uh, like uh, is derivation of uh, this transport coefficients. Uh, see, naively, this would just be given by Green Kubo, but then from Green Kubo, we know it diverges. Okay, so then you have to do some sort of. Uh, uh, it's not clear how exactly uh, you can get uh, do a microscopic derivation, but I think this is also true for. Okay, so this kind of hydrodynamics is also written for uh, other lattice models, for example, uh, uh, ASAP or something. I, uh, exclusion processes, okay, where you can write a lattice model and uh, which is completely microscopic, and then at a coarse grained level you get the KPZ equation. But uh, doing the derivation, I think it's still it's not rigorous, right? I mean, you again have to put a noise term which is completely phenomenological. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that is a open and very difficult uh, problem. Uh, something we have been trying, but uh, it hasn't been, been very successful. Uh, okay, so any other questions? Otherwise, I'll just show some other stuff. Okay, so... Okay, so, uh, so this is the FPU model that we studied. Uh, I already said that uh, if you uh, study momentum non-conserving systems, uh, so... Uh, so if you put an on-site potential, right, then total momentum is not conserved. Then in this case, uh, so like this is uh, this called the FIFO model. Uh, in this case, you get uh, Fourier's law and a finite heat conduction. Okay, so everything is works fine. Uh, okay, what is there? Okay, this is some other stuff. Okay, maybe this is one interesting thing, which again there were some questions, so I'll just show it. Right. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so one interesting question is the following. Okay, so uh, yesterday we looked at this disordered harmonic chain. Okay, and uh, so we looked at the case where uh, they were spinning at all, all sides, okay. Okay, so these are disordered M1, M2, M3, M4, and so on. And the springs are some K, K, K. Okay, and uh, so, I mean, how does current go with system size in this system? I don't know, if, let, let's see if people remember. <laughs> huh? Okay. Uh, yeah, but this is the pinned harmonic chain. Yeah, it's exponential. Like this is the case I said it's an insulator. So it's a uh, decays exponentially with the uh, system size. Okay. So now one very interesting question is uh, what happens if I take this system, which is an insulator, it doesn't conduct heat, and I uh, add uh, some anharmonicity. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so,
Okay, so uh, I mean, what do, what do people think? What will happen? Will it, uh, if I stay, put a very small amount, will it stay insulator or will it become a conductor? Okay, so the other thing is if I put anharmonicity and if I didn't have disorder, then would I get Fourier's law and a finite conductivity in this system? Supposing no disorder, but if I put anharmonicity, do I get a finite conductivity in this system? Yes or no, at least, I mean, either thing is... <laughs> no, see, I just said, I mean, like, uh, if you destroy momentum conservation, and if you have anonymity, then Fourier's law is valid. Right, I just gave that example of the uh, phi 4 model, right? So you get anomalous transport only when you don't have pinning. Okay, so if you put pinning potential, which is like you destroy momentum conservation, then you get uh, finite conductivity. So in this model, if I didn't have disorder, but I, if, if I put anharmonicity in some way, like I could put inter, uh, like this guy's uh, uh, some uh, anharmonic terms, then immediately I get a finite conductivity. Okay, so uh, so this implies conductivity is zero in the sense that thermodynamic limit. But if I take the ordered anharmonic chain, I would get uh, finite conductivity. Okay, now if I have both, uh, what does one expect? Okay, so that's the question. I mean, uh, okay, so this is, I mean, anyway, so this is a, a difficult problem. Uh, and uh, in quantum systems, this is a very, uh, like, uh, now a hot topic, uh, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's referred to as uh, this problem of mini body localization. Okay, so there, uh, like, uh, if you have electrons in a, non interacting electrons in a disorder potential, then all states are localized and it's an insulator. And one question is like, what happens when the electrons start interacting? Okay, so it turns out that in uh, the electronic case, uh, at least in one dimensions, if you as, uh, if you put in a small amount of interactions, the system stays insulating. Okay, so there's a, uh, I mean, uh, so if if uh, let's say this is uh, disorder and this is interactions, uh, then uh, for uh, a zero interaction, let's say it's uh, like uh, uh, it's uh, localized for any int uh, disorder. Uh, now, when you increase uh, interactions, uh, you need some like uh, uh, you need some critical uh, 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 interactions before you become uh, conducting. Okay. So, uh, so in, this is uh, so there's a localized mini body localized state in this uh, localized uh, state in the sense that. Even though there are interactions, it's still uh, insulator, okay, and then it becomes uh, the thermal system. So in classical systems, it turns out that as soon as you put anharmonicity, at least there's a lot of numerical evidence, as soon as you put any amount of anharmonicity, it becomes a conductor, okay. Uh, so that is a very uh, interesting problem. Uh, so I'll just show you some results. Uh, so this is some simulations we had done where we uh, like took this particular model. So this is the anharmonic part and this is a disorder, and uh, there's on-site uh, spinning. So, so I'm plotting conductivity versus system size, okay. And this black curve is when I have no, uh, when this lambda is zero. So no anharmonicity, just uh, conductivity and disorder harmonic chain with pinning. So you expect the insulator and the conductivity decays exponentially with system size, okay. So this is log log plot. And you see that the conductivity decreases, it becomes an insulator. Mm -hmm. And then you switch on some anharmonicity. Uh, so this is lambda is zero is this curve. And then even if it's a very small amount of disorder, you find that you get a finite conductivity, okay. So finite means it's independent of system size. Okay, so this is what I just said that uh, the quantum thing is a sort of big area in statistical physics and condensed matter physics called uh, MBL. And uh, for the classical system, there are some very uh, like uh, nice work where uh, I mean it's not well understood uh, analyt like theoretically, and there are all sorts of interesting ideas uh, involving uh, like uh, breaking of this cam Tory and all and thermalization. Okay, so maybe uh, uh, this is the last thing I'll show, uh, and uh, I'll stop. And uh, what else is there? Uh, Okay, so if you want to know about the Levy walk and uh, fractional diffusion equation, then you should look at the reference I, uh, uh, that I uh, up just uh, uploaded on the website. Uh, so in that 
place uh, there are like uh, several, uh, there are two models of this uh, stochastic noise uh, discussed and the second model is what i discussed in the class so if you want to understand that model you should just look at the second section uh, and it also discusses this fluctuating hydrodynamics in a very uh, sh uh, brief way so that is a, a good place to get some broad idea of and you can also find many other references there uh, okay so if, uh, then you can ask any questions if you have Okay, so if no questions, uh, then uh, we go for lunch. <laughs>